new ice age is to strike on this date, thanks to an Antarctica discovery. This is predicted by a NASA scientist who is working, researching, with many others, of course, in one of the Antarctica stations. This is uh, by Callum Hoare on Express UK. NASA scientists predicted when the next ice age could strike after making a discovery 3,000 meters below the ice of Antarctica. And as we know, what the way they do it is by examining ice cores, seeing what took place. They can even discover the uh, ages of the past volcanic eruptions by ash that could be um, have got has uh, reached Antarctica. Now the Ice Age is, as we know, a long period of lower temperature, so much reduced that the Earth's surface and the atmosphere, which results in the expansion of continental and polar sheet sheets, is taking place. Scientists have known that the Earth goes through various cycles of cooling and warming and following adjustments in its orbit path because it wobbles and it shifts, it tilts, as well as the geological factors, as we said before, the volcanic eruptions because of all these tilts, or even asteroid strikes and then volcanic eruptions. So this results in long-term periods of what they say is glaciation, and it forces the expansion of growing of ice sheets across the Earth's surface. Earth is currently in a quaternary glaciation, an alternating series of glacial and interglacial periods that began about less than 3 million years ago, 2.58 million years ago. So that was just before uh, the latest Yellowstone eruption, which was about 2.1 million years ago from what they uh, calculated. But it was revealing during what uh, the documentary of uh, Amazon's Prime Steps to the Future, a former NASA scientist, Dr. Jerome Chapelaz, using Antar Antarctica to understand what happened and what will happen in the future. Because they examine the cycles and how often these cycles take place. In a 2010 documentary, he reveals Researchers from the Grenoble in Switzerland Glaciology Laboratory have preserved precious archives taken in the Arctic and Antarctic expedition after expedition. The concept is very simple, he says. The deeper we dig, the deeper we go into the past. Uh, the drilling tool is equipped with a knife which drills the ice and the shavings are evacuated by an endless screw. After weeks of drilling, that reaches depths of over 3,000 meters, spanning back to over 250,000 years in the past. Dr. Chapelaz, who leads up the NASA back project, goes on to explain what he found. He detailed what does an ice age look like. It typically looks the whole world of the northern hemisphere covered with ice. The whole of the Northern Hemisphere, can you imagine? And that's where most of the people, are, of course, are living today. Two kilometers of ice on Canada, can you imagine? Two kilometers thick of ice on Canada. And the Alpine glacier spread to Lyon in France. We could walk from Europe to France. Well, okay, you want to walk, you can walk. But if you have two kilometers of ice on the Earth, first of all, where do you get your food from? And if it's that cold, how can you survive in such freezing weather? No food, no uh, produce, no meat, no dairy, no vegetation, nothing. So what would you live on? That's my question. Okay, you have all that ice, it's wonderful for you to very easily walk around the uh, various continents as opposed to uh, using a ship. Uh, I'm sitting here uh, <laughs> blinking away. All right, now in the future, he says, we expect these conditions to come in 40 to 60,000 years. 
The program went on to explain that scientists can now predict an ice age, thanks to his understanding of what took place. And this is what he adds, our distant cousins, Saturn and Jupiter, are responsible for this. Hmm. These two planets are so big that their mass periodically deforms uh, the Earth's orbit, making it more elliptical. Their mass periodically deforms or changes, that is, the Earth's orbit, making it more elliptical. Since the Sun is farther away, the energy we receive from it lessens. The Earth's orbit around the Sun causes the quantity of energy received at the surface of the planet to change with time. If we take winter snowfall at out latitudes, there needs to be enough energy during the summer to make it melt. But if it's not strong enough, the snow will stay and form a glass a glacier over the summer. All right, but he still does not indicate here, this article does not indicate why Saturn and Jupiter would pull the Earth's orbit that far out that it would take it away from uh, its position close to the sun. I don't understand. Uh, okay, that's the article. He doesn't say why Jupiter and Saturn do that. Um, maybe we have to go deeper and find out. Every 11 years or so, sunspots fade away, bringing a period of relative calm. This, this is, is called, called Solar Minimum, minimum says Dean Pesnell of NASA's Goddard, Goddard Space Flight, Flight Center, Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. Maryland. And, and it's, it's a regular, regular part of the sunspot cycle. The sun, sun is heading towards solar minimum now. Sunspot counts were relatively high in 2014, and now they're sliding toward a low point expected in 2019 to 2020. While, While intense, intense activity, activity such as sunspots and solar flares subside during solar minimum, that doesn't, doesn't mean the sun becomes dull. Solar, solar activity simply changes form. But, but during solar, solar minimum, this natural, natural heating mechanism subsides. Earth's upper atmosphere cools and, to some degree, can collapse. Without a normal amount of drag, space junk tends to hang around. There are unique space weather effects that get stronger during solar minimum. For example, the number of galactic cosmic rays that reach Earth's upper atmosphere increases during solar minimum. Galactic cosmic rays are high-energy particles accelerated toward the solar system by distant supernova explosions and other violent events in the galaxy. As now says that, that during solar, solar minimum, the sun's, sun's magnetic field weakens and provides less shielding from these cosmic rays. rays. This, this can pose an increased threat to astronauts traveling through space. space. It's not just the astronauts, of course, it's also the people traveling in airplanes. The higher they are, the more radiation they, they are fed. And the more hours, of course, they're up there, is again detrimental to their health. Now, this is a mini Ice Age warning. Solar minimum hits all-time high, and it's a perfect storm. Let's remember that the um, solar minimum also has an effect not only on cooling weather, it also has an effect on disruption in uh, geography, geology in that it, there's an uptick of earthquakes and uh, volcanic eruptions. Uh, whether we like it or not, this is not fear-mongering. This is exactly what scientists have found from the past. This is by Sean Martin on Express UK. We're in the solar minimum, and uh, it's uh, true that after scientists recorded an all-time high in cosmic rays, meaning Earth could face a mini ice age, they say, about 10 years ago, scientists noticed an all-time high in cosmic rays originating from deep space, not to be confused with the sun's rays, solar rays. Now, scientists notice cosmic rays are back on the up as the sun goes deeper into a solar minimum. The sun, as we know, follows its cycles every 11 years, where it reaches a solar maximum and then back again to a solar minimum. And during the solar maximum, the sun gives off more heat and is literally with, littered with sunspots. The less heat in a solar minimum is due to the decrease in magnetic waves. Fewer magnetic waves equates to the sun being slightly cooler, and experts are expecting the solar minimum to deepen even further.
with less magnetic waves from the sun, cosmic rays, of course, find it easier to enter through the Earth's atmosphere and are more noticeable, of course, to scientists. And while cosmic rays have little effect on our planet, from what they know so far, uh, well, of course, uh, because of our atmosphere thinning, you know, they get through, uh, as we saw in the video. One of the reasons scientists monitor them is to see when the sun has entered a solar minimum. And now with cosmic rays being all-time high, scientists know the sun is about to enter a prolonged cooling period. And cosmic forecasting space weather, the site that we just um, uploaded a video from, having to do with the meters 40 hours, 40 an hour from Halley's Comet. You'll see the video before this one. The um, space weather says ground-based neutron monitors and high-altitude cosmic ray balloons are registering a new increase in cosmic rays. Those are the balloons that go up and every week they come back with uh, a new present if you want to have one. To, uh, For example, one of the latest ones was a nice little heart. And if you wanted to order one for Mother's Day, you can get one from there that has been out in space. Now, the Ulu Neutron Monitor in Finland has been making measurements since 1964, and their report levels in April 2019 only percentage points below the space age maximum of 2009. So what's going on? The answer is solar minimum. And that means that during the low phase of this new 11-year solar cycle, the sun's magnetic field and solar wind have weakened. They say cosmic rays find it easier to penetrate the inner solar system. In 2009, the sun experienced the deepest solar minimum in a century. Cosmic rays reaching Earth naturally surged, and 10 years later, solar minimum is back with a renewed weakening of the sun's magnetic field and the solar wind. And again, it's a perfect storm. A panel of experts led by NOAA and NASA recently predicted that the current minimum would reach uh, Nadir in late 2019 or 2020, likely matching the record-setting minimum of 2009. We've already seen, uh, you know, the the spring, the late spring chaos in weather, uh, having to do with the flooding and the tremendous rain and tornadoes in the United States and elsewhere in the world, uh, from India, Pakistan, uh, Iraq, uh, all the way down to uh, Australia. Now, I'm sitting here in Athens, Greece, and today is Sunday, May 4th. I know this is the coldest spring that we've had here in over 35 years. Okay? The coldest. I remember uh, the beginning of May is when people used to go, May 1st, you know, in Europe is a worker's day. It's a holiday. People don't work. It's a day off. And they all here used to go swimming. It was so warm and nice that people used to take to the beach. Well, there's nothing like that. Forget it. I, I, I'm, I, yesterday, you won't believe it, it was so cold in here, I was shivering. I said, oh my God, my throat is beginning to hurt, you know. I said, so I had to turn on the heating in the house. That's where we are. It's as if, uh, it's, I remember this is how it was in, when I was living in Montreal, Canada, you know. Uh, <laughs> This is not normal weather, that's what I'm trying to say. It's very, very changed. Uh, it's more like, I, I, what would it be? I don't know, northern France? Southern England weather? Let's put it that way. Uh, now, the, um, the last time a prolonged solar minimum was in effect was the Maunder minimum, which saw seven decades of freezing weather. That began in 1645. And it lasted about 50 years. It lasted through 1715. And it happened when sunspots were very, very rare, exceedingly rare, they said. During that period, temperatures dropped globally by 1.3 degrees Celsius. And it led to a shorter seasons, shor shorter farming seasons, and ultimately food shortages, what was called a mini ice age. The Vencore weather, that's the meteor meteorological website, said, quote, low solar activity is known to have consequences on Earth's weather and climate, and it also is well co correlated with an increase in cosmic rays that reach the upper part of the atmosphere. The blank sun 
is a sign that the next solar minimum is approaching and there will be an increased number of spotless days over the next few years. And now we're not talking about the uh, increased geological activity, the uptick in geological activity that we covered very detailed uh, analysis in other videos. And you can see them in my playlist, if you like. They're very, very informative because they were um, descriptions of experiments done by scientists. Drag. Space, space junk tends to hang around. around. There, there are unique space, space weather effects that get stronger during solar minimum. For example, For example the, the number of galactic, galactic cosmic rays, rays that reach Earth's upper, upper atmosphere increases during solar minimum. Galactic cosmic rays are high-energy particles accelerated toward the solar system by distant supernova explosions and other violent events in the galaxy. Pesnell says that during solar minimum, the sun's magnetic field weakens and provides less shielding from these cosmic rays. This can pose an increased threat to astronauts traveling through space. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.